Maybe if I put it in terms of a presidential race. Eliza Barrett, will you be my running mate until the end of time? <laughs> Lincoln, you are about as romantic as a dirty shoelace. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Overthinking what, exactly? Eliza, wh what are you doing here? I live here, remember? Are you feeling all right? No, I mean, yes. I gotta see this through. See what through? Eliza Barrett, will you please be my co-pilot for as long as we- Lincoln, we have been over this. I am not changing careers. Um, not what I meant. Uh, I want to walk you down the- Lincoln, it is far too late for walks, and I am tired. Okay, fine, I get it. Look, I literally got a jet. Lapidus made the mistake of eating lunch at Mike's, Again. So, now we're down a pilot. Wait, I thought you were staying the night. Don't worry, I'll be back in the morning before you even wake up. I really do not like the idea of you flying at night. Relax, honey. It's a routine flight, done it a million times. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <sighs> Have a safe trip, okay? I will, I promise. Eliza, she's going to write about my bar. I'll be famous. The sky is the limit. Mr. Powell, you are a mayor Barrett. Please, just a moment of your time. Typical Eliza Barrett, always stealing the spotlight. What can I say, Max? The press adores me. What can I do for you, Miss... Peterson. Nancy Peterson of the New Mexico Times. New Mexico Times? What happened to the old one? Oh, <laughs> that's a new one. And she came all the way from Maine to ask about my bar. Isn't that amazing, Eliza? I'm gonna be on the front page of the paper. I would like to ask you some questions, if you have the time. Certainly. Who better to ask about our fair town? Let us begin with a personal question. Who is Eliza Barrett? What's your story? It all started with my ancestor Elijah Barrett. He came to this land aboard the Unsinkable. After the ship sank, his crew split up, and he and those loyal to him established this town. Yes, I have heard this tale. The other group followed Juan Plata, and their paths never crossed again. Ah, you know our local history. In any case, my family remained, and we have been leading the town ever since. Then you must be grooming your daughter to take over once you retire, yes? Yes, of course she... By Harding's wandering eye, this town is doomed! I seem to have struck a nerve. Let us discuss something else. Let us move on to the next question, shall we? Let's chat a little bit about this town, which you love and cherish so much. What are some important landmarks? Well, tell me, what have you seen already? Not much, to be honest. I barely had time. I spent the morning doing interviews, then went to the diner. You ate at Mike's? Duh, I've tried quite a few dishes. I even sampled his latest creation. Do not worry, Ms. Peterson. Town Hall was prepared for this eventuality. Take this. 
The Michael Walker Survival Pack includes a timeline of what to expect in the next 24 hours. It also includes a roll of military-grade toilet paper with 200 layers of extra-absorbent tissue, an acid-resistant plastic bag for vomit and other secretions, and a direct line to our patron saint, the Virgin of Guadalupe. Oh, one more thing. Where should we send the body? This seems excessive. I actually feel fine. Of course you do. For now. Oh, I forgot to ask. I'd like to take some pictures of the town to accompany the article. Do I need a permit? Of course not. Feel free to take as many pictures as you like. Just make sure you get my good side. <laughs> and don't forget to take a picture of my handsome smile as well. It is quite handsome indeed, Mr. Powell. Tell me, what is your secret? Oh, these aren't my real teeth. I lost them all when my superior officer slapped me for insubordination that one time. These beauties are what's known as the Swiss Army Dentures. They've got everything a soldier needs. Cyanide pill, short-range laser-guided missile, grappling hook, fax machine, Bluetooth speakers. And they give me a smile to die for, don't you think? <laughs> Let's talk about something else. Yours is the only town of this size in the state with an operational military airfield. Could you tell me more about it, please? Our airfield was built in 1792 by Sir John Airfield himself, who actually invented the concept. But the airplane was not properly invented until 1903. Well, Sir John was ahead of his time. He was the first to anticipate the eventual need for such a place. To be honest, this is our second airfield. The first was burned down during the War of 1812, around the same time as the White House. Wait, the what burned down? What was it, arson? Canadians, actually. Really? Canadians? World's going to hell. I haven't been this stunned since that coconut fell on my head. Yes, quite a shock. No one expects the Canadian ignition. Right. Let's go back to the airfield for a moment. This is starting to sound more like an article about the airfield than the town. <laughs> what are you, Miss Peterson? A journalist or a Soviet spy? What paper did you say you worked for again? The Santa Fe Herald? <laughs> I thought you said... This interview is over! I mean, thank you, Miss Mayor. That will be all. From a 1 to a 10, how would you rate the town's defenses? Let me put it plainly. If the Soviets showed up, we'd be screwed. Not like that would ever happen, though. Well, well, if it isn't Mayor Barrett, you must be happy now, aren't you? I am, but I do not understand your little comment. Amos took my baby girl! I was not aware you were a parent. Congratulations on the blessed event. What? No! My guitar, my precious Gibson Electric Blue. And don't act innocent, this has your claw marks all over it. I had nothing to do with that. Perhaps if you emitted fewer misophonic screeches. First, you close KGFL. Now, the sheriff illegally seizes my property, making it impossible for me to work. Yes, Mr. Huckleberry, but look at the bright side. You have so much time now to find a quieter, more productive hobby. I'll never give up on my dreams. I'm gonna revolutionize music one day. You'll see. You'll all see. Mm-hmm. Well, while we are waiting for this musical revolution, may I have a word? I can count on your vote, right? Well, I would. Why do I feel like there is a but coming? But you've broken a lot of campaign promises. Mr. Huckleberry, I can assure you there is absolutely no connection between the promises I have made and their alleged failure to uphold themselves. 
Do you even feel bad at all for the people who lost their jobs after you shut down KGFL? Ultimately, the failure of the KGFL was a direct result of poor administration. Town Hall cannot be faulted for allocating its budget to higher priority projects. Yeah, yeah, tell that to my buddies Walter and Frankie. They had to seek work in Corona, Miss Mayor. Corona! Oh dear, those poor, poor people. May Washington himself have mercy upon their souls. So, in good conscience, I can't vote for you. Hope you understand. Well, unless... Unless what? Unless you help me record my first album. If you do that, you'll get my vote. Deal? <sighs> I have no choice but to accept. How exactly are we going to record your album? We just need to follow my four steps to Rockin' Glory Guide. Oh, please do enlighten me. It's easy. First, we need to get my guitar back. Second, we need to find some kind of recording device. This seems reasonable so far. Okay, the third step is to get a tape to put in the recording device, so don't forget that. The final and most important step is to mail that baby to my record company. This seems straightforward enough. I may require further details later on, however. I will be on my way now. Hey, Miss Mayor, one question. Why do you hate music so much? My auditory nerves are two sizes too small, making it impossible for me to enjoy music. That's it! You're like the Grinch of music! If you can't enjoy it, you'll make it so no one else can. But has it always been this way? No. I contracted this condition right after my offspring's birth. born prankster! I've been messing with mom since my very first breath. That reminds me. I still have not punished you for that, have I? You can't ground me if you can't find me! Eliza, what a pleasant surprise. Good day, Amos. Do you have any crimes to report? I do not want any surprises this close to the election. Nothing out of the ordinary. Van lost his pet rock, and Mrs. Roberts' cat got stuck in a tree. Again. Is that really everything? Yep, that's pretty much it. Then would you care to explain what that is on the wall behind you? This? Uh, it's, it's nothing. Just a collage I've been working on. A collage of wasted time, maybe. You are working on one of those hard-to-explain cases. Admit it. <sighs> those crafty chipmunks have been quiet for a while. Which means they're up to something! Oh no, not the chipmunks. Anyway, on to more meaningful topics. I need you to release a piece of evidence. Hank Huckleberry's guitar. Sure. Let me just gift wrap that for you. Well, that was easy. It was a joke, Eliza. A joke. And no, you can't have it. It's been confiscated for a reason. Fine, Amos. Just know one thing. When this is over, I will have that guitar. Just remember that you had the chance to give it willingly. My schedule suddenly got busy. Yeah, yeah, don't let me keep you. Oh, let him sleep. Amos is probably running him ragged, hunting cryptids or something equally not worth thinking about. Why take anything from the medkit when you have top-notch insurance? 
If I get so much as a blister, a chopper descends to take me to the nearest hospital. Eliza! Move one more inch and I'll be forced to find you. Try and stop me. You win this round, but remember Amos, Eliza Barrett always wins. I suggest a more direct approach. Tampering by all means. Amos already has a salary. What more do you want me to give him? He died without ever acknowledging you as his son, yet you have followed in his footsteps. He was my father! And whether he thought so or not, it doesn't make me any less proud of his accomplishments. Are you sure your mother was correct about your, uh, lineage? She wouldn't lie about something like that! And Mr. Coltrane, who raised you and gave you his name, he never said anything either? No. For some reason, my stepdad didn't talk to me about all my mom's ex-boyfriends. Where's all this coming from, anyway? Nothing. I just find it surprising how devoted you are to the memory of a man who rejected you. The looks you give Sheriff Garrett's statue. Well, I never even saw you look at Gloria that way. That statue represents why I fight for this town. And mark my words, Eliza, you may think I'm exaggerating the chipmunk problem, but I have the feeling those furry bastards are gonna be my William Bonnet. This town is too peaceful for all your vigilance, Amos. And honestly, how much damage can chipmunks do? We'll see about that. Amos's admiration for Sheriff Garrett knows no bounds. That might be of use to me. I am sure the statue will be unaffected by this small explosion. But it should cause enough commotion to distract Amos for a while. Alea iacta est. Or, in words that you would understand, there is no turning back now. Ah, what a successful night! I managed to shift every single meatball without anyone noticing they were mostly sawdust. And I got enough leftovers in the storage out back to set up a buffet tomorrow. Yep, everything's going my way. Nothing could ruin this good mood I'm in. God damn it, Mike. Why do you always talk so much? <sighs> ah, now this is how I like to see the place. You mean, like, clean? No, empty. Why are you in here bothering me? Isn't there a baby somewhere you need to steal candy from? Ah, oh, Michael. Did I spoil your evening just by showing up? Good. I am not going to converse with him again. To defeat your enemy, you must know your enemy. Well, well, what a pleasant surprise. To what do I owe this visit from such a distinguished figure? Oh, Sam, you always know just what to say. I came to see your new venture, of course. You know I take great interest in local business. You can't fool this old wolf, Eliza. You're here to ask for my vote, aren't you? 
You can read people like a book. I have always admired this about you. You never told me who you plan to vote for. Well, there's always room for improvement, as they say. Perhaps it's time for a change in leadership. Oh no, not you too. <laughs> Relax, Eliza. I was joking. Although, if someone put up a sign for the motel on the highway... Well, that sounds simple enough, but I would have done it without the blackmail. One can never be too careful with you, Eliza. I am glad to see the motel up and running. Although I still think you should have opened a fine dining establishment. It would be a great opportunity to... To steal customers from Mike's and put him out of business, right? I told you before, and I'm telling you again. Keep me out of your squabbles with Mike. <sighs> well, you cannot blame a girl for trying. Is something the matter? You look particularly sad today. I... Don't you remember what day it is? Today is the 10th anniversary of the Great Fire. It should be my son standing here today and talking to you, not me. I am so sorry, Sam. Truly, we all lost so much that day. Friends, family, and the most heroic bear the world has ever seen. Wouldn't be so much of a loss if you'd have let me cook him! Well, if you need anything, you can count on me. You know that. Thank you, Eliza. I'll make sure to fill out the right forms this time. <laughs> <laughs> you sure I can't cook that bear? It's been ten years already! You know, aged meat is on the rise. I'll even give you a 5% cut of the profits. Fine, 10%. 30%? I would like to know more about this motel of yours. Ask away. Why a motel of all things? It was my son's dream to build a place where weary travelers could rest from their journeys. Somewhere with good food, great company, and rooms at knockdown prices. Wasn't your son's dream to become a pilot? Well, yes, it was. The motel was pretty far down the list. But he was too clumsy for ballet, and we all know what happens to aspiring chefs around here. Well, while he may not have sought the motel owner's life, I know he would be proud of you. Tell me about your breakfast menu. Because I know you cannot cook to save your life. Well, yeah, about that. I've had to bring the food in from the bistro in Corona. Please, excuse me, Sam. My hearing must be failing me because I could swear I just heard you say Corona. What alternative did I have, Eliza? Order from Mike's? God, no. I hate to say this, but I suppose you had no other choice. Now, keep it to yourself. The last thing we need is for Mike to find out about this. Who knows what he'd be capable of? Brings you here. Hey, Ben. <laughs> Just the usual. Sure thing. Fifty gallons of my super flammable mix ready to go. I would suggest finding another caterer. The sooner the better. How are the rooms? The very best you'll ever find. Why not spend the night here and try it for yourself? On the house. I would love to, but... Listen, Sam, I... Before you answer, think about this. A romantic night with Lincoln, away from prying eyes. And, more importantly, away from Betty. You sly fox. You had me the moment you said away from Betty. Besides, my back could use a break from that coffin. Then it's settled. A room for two next weekend. You'll love it.
Enlighten me as to your business philosophy. Simple. Affordable accommodation for everyone. No pointless extra charges. Hmm. Define pointless, would you? With every booking, I offer a free breakfast and complimentary toiletries. No charge for things like parking, cancellations, using the ice machine. I have heard enough. Sam, this cannot go on. I will not stand idly while total strangers rob you blind. Oh, not this again. Yes, this again. And pay attention this time. In fact, write it down. Start by adding the following to every bill. Booking fees, cancellation penalties, baggage handling, water, gas, keys. Be reasonable. I can't possibly charge people for using their room keys. Do you know how badly you could hurt your wrist every time you hand them over to a guest? Now, considering the beautiful scenery surrounding this place, you could easily charge for the view. What view? There's nothing but rocks and cacti here. Am I supposed to charge people just for arriving? Exactly. You are beginning to understand. Now, one last thing, the most important one, a calculation fee. What the hell is that supposed to be? Why, compensation for adding up the other fees, of course. You know what? Seems like my mind's been changed for me. You wouldn't mind helping an old friend set this whole thing up, right? I'm not great with numbers. Of course I would. For a fee. <laughs> oh, relax. I love paperwork too much to pass up this opportunity. I should have it all drafted by the end of the week. I must be going. I have a lot of campaigning to do. Well, don't leave without a souvenir. Here, take some of our complimentary matches. Why would I? Because they're free. Excellent point. Eliza, if you don't mind me saying, you look like you slept poorly. Well, I had some bizarre dreams. But I am quite certain that the coffin my offspring replaced my bed with is to blame. I had a strange dream myself. What about? A goose flew from its nest after nuzzling with its mate and soared through the skies. Then suddenly, the sky clouded. Lightning struck the bird. And it fell like a stone, spiraling until it crashed onto a newborn tree. Oh, that is strange, indeed. But it was only a dream, Sam. You should not give it too much thought. What's going on? What was that noise? No! Oh my god! This can't be happening! Well, I finally managed to retrieve this accursed guitar. Mr. Huckleberry had better be grateful. Oh, good evening. I believe the sheriff is indisposed at the moment, but he should be with you in an hour or two. Not so fast, Ms. Mayor. I'm not here for the sheriff. I'm here to make sure you don't get away with what you've done. I have no idea who you are or what you are talking about. But I am far too busy for this. Now, if you will excuse me, Ms. Hart, um... <clears throat> yes, Ms. Hart. I'm the new mayor of Corona. And I am more than willing to tell the sheriff who really blew up that statue. <sighs> Ms. Hart, I believe we got off on the wrong foot. Let us start anew. Would you care to explain why Corona's mayor is wasting her valuable time in my town? <laughs> You'd better get used to seeing my face around here. 
Because I'm running against you for mayor of this hellhole. You, mayor? I am not sure you have the stamina, charisma, intellect, or wardrobe for the role. But do not worry, I have an alternative suggestion. Put a pin in that. After all, you'll need a new job when everything goes pear-shaped for you. Ms. Hart, please. There is absolutely no way I am losing the election. It would be better if you realized how futile your candidacy is, and took Joseph's job to save yourself some further humiliation. Who knows? You might learn a thing or two about politics. I would sooner drag my naked behind over the cactus field than be your lackey. In that case, Ms. Hart, I sincerely hope your behind is resilient. Wait, Corona's elections were just last month. How can you be running for mayor here? Oh, I didn't resign, if that's what you're asking. I plan to be in charge of both towns. You cannot be mayor of two towns at once. Oh, but I can. See, I recently passed this little piece of legislation that allows the mayor of Corona to take on additional responsibilities in the county without giving up their position. Convenient, is it not? <sighs> Still, you will never win an election in this town. The people adore me. Ha! <laughs> Certainly not me! See? The people are ready for a change. Ha! <laughs> change! I'd still rather vote for Eliza than for you, sweetheart! What was it you were saying, Ms. Hart? Since you are the new mayor of Corona... How did you manage to get Mr. Wiggins to cede the position of mayor? Oh, he was only too happy to appoint me mayor and enjoy his well-earned retirement. He would not have given up his chair, even if it were in flames. What did you do? You might enjoy this, actually. Did you ever hear about Operation Alter Boy? What politician worth her salt has not? But why... Oh, no. You did not. Oh, but I did. And did you... Yes, twice, actually. And did he see the... Oh, he certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, pardon me. Where were we again? We should talk about the former residents of that raised orphanage. Oh, so now you care about child welfare. Those children need a home, and you are partly responsible for solving the problem. Well, I'm sure we can resolve this in no time at all. Let's set a date and work to... Together. Together. You can't say it either, huh? I suppose the children are comfortable enough for now. We can table this for the time being. You could lift the ban Mr. Wiggins imposed on my offspring. Why would I do that? A permanent ban for the biohazard incident seems perfectly reasonable to me. To be fair, while my offspring may have brought that radioactive iguana to your town, it being explosive was entirely Michael's fault. I don't care. Your daughter is a menace. I want her as far away from me, I mean, Corona, as possible. I will not argue with that. But are the wanted dead or alive posters really necessary? Yes! Well, let me just say, I do not envy you. Oh, but you will. Especially once I make your town part of Corona. And force you to scrub the bathrooms with a toothbrush. Thank you for the insight, Ms. Hart. Now I know what to do with you once you lose. How did you know I was here? Oh, that was easy. All I had to do was follow the trail of pain and suffering you leave in your wake. I do not leave a... Point proven. Did you blow up that statue just to get your hands on that piece of evidence? This is not evidence, Miss Hart. It is called a guitar. 
Now, you will stop making wild accusations, or I will beat you senseless with it. Up to you. Will you be staying here long? If so, I know a place for you to lay your head. Silencing me will get you nowhere, Miss Barrett! No, you paranoid goose. There are lovely rooms available at- You can't lock me in one of your jail cells and expect that to shut me up! Your dictatorship ends here, Miss Barrett. You might imprison me, but you won't win. What the hell? Go ahead. Lock me up and throw away the key. Do your worst, but I will not be silenced. No matter what you do to me, I will rise above it and free this town from your tyranny. Are you finished yet? No, but you will be after this very public disturbance. Nothing like a little defiance to weaken the enemy's authority after all. I cannot help but feel I know you from somewhere. What did you say your name was? Oh, I already told you everything you need to know. If there's anything else, I'm sure someone as brilliant as you can figure it out. It would save some precious time if you just told me. You'll have all the time in the world to figure it out. Once I kick your ass in the election, that is. Is that how you want to play it? By the time I am done with you, watering Chuck will be the only job you will ever get. Chuck? The plant? The one and only. On second thought, I tire of this conversation. Why do you not go back to Corona and admire my work from afar? Who knows, you may even learn something. What is there left to learn? I've already studied everything there is to know about you. Every radio speech, every TV appearance, every article and book you've written. I've seen it all. Oh, I see what is going on here. Oh my, why didn't you say so sooner? To my most special admirer, Ms. Hart. Thank you for your support in the upcoming election. There. Let it not be said that Eliza Barrett cannot recognize a fan when she sees one. Now, off you go. I have much left to do tonight. Ugh. Excuse me, Max, but I need to borrow the reporter. It will not be long. What a surprise! Eliza Barrett stealing the spotlight! There are some things I would like to ask you, Ms. Peterson. Oh, if you insist. I cannot help but notice your recording device. I have been assaulted by multitudes of reporters, but have never seen a machine such as yours. Oh, this little thing. My mother made it for me. She's really good at tinkering. Your mother? How sweet. It is heartening to see such a strong bond between parent and child. Anyway, what I was trying to say was... I need your recorder, Ms. Peterson. And I need some classified information. Perhaps we can arrange a trade? You think a mere tape recorder is worth the price of confidential information I might possess? As I mentioned, this one is very special to me. So... It makes sense that I need something special in return, yes? Perhaps there is something in my office that might satisfy her. That will be all for now, Ms. Peterson. Certainly. I'll be around if you need me. They will be safer here, out of your reach. Before I hand this to you, you must promise to keep it safe. It is for your eyes only. Do not mention anything in your article that could betray military secrets. Don't worry. Nothing I'll do with that information will damage my country in any way. 
Wonderful. Now, if you would not mind. Pleasure doing business with... Wait, where is the tape? You asked for the recorder and you have it. As for the tape... Well, you strike me as a resourceful woman. I'm sure you'll manage. <sighs> Closing the radio station has finally come back to haunt me. I could have just walked in there and taken one. Wait, you had another one this whole time? A reporter is always ready for any situation, Miss Barrett. Recording now? Let us get this over with. Now, Mr. Huckleberry, I have upheld my end of the deal. I expect you will do the same. Not so fast. You gotta send it to Crooked Deal Records. They'll do the rest. Excuse me? Why do I have to do that? Cause it was your idea to put Amos in charge of the mail? Fair enough. Amos? Can it wait? No. I need you to fulfill your duties as a mail carrier. Send this to Crooked Deal Records. It is urgent. <laughs> Can I finish crying first? <sighs> if you must. But I made a campaign promise to send this out today, so cry quickly, please. Alright, alright. <laughs> All things considered, today has been a good day for the Barrett administration. Time to head home and get some well deserved rest. Well, well, well. My offspring trying to sneak home after staying out too late. What a surprise. Stop calling me that, would you? If you think you can wiggle your way out of this by changing the subject, think again. Now, what weak excuse do you have to offer me this time? I was at the school library, studying for finals. How about a little praise for once, huh? There are no final exams in the middle of summer. I, uh was obviously studying for next year's finals, duh! <sighs> Ugh, come on, Mom! I'm an adult! Let me do what I want! As long as you live under my roof, you will abide by my rules. Why don't you want me to be happy? It is not my job to raise you happy. It is my job to raise you right. Everyone else does what they want. Why can't I? If everyone else decided to jump off a cliff, would you jump too? I mean... like... Everyone? No! The answer you are looking for is no! God, you are freaking insufferable! How dare you speak to me that way! Wait, what the hell was that? Enough! Mary Elizabeth Anderson, go to your room now! <sighs> I hate you!
Nothing ever seems to get through that thick skull of hers. Hello, John. Mr. President? Hello, sir. What can I do for you? We have a situation in the Southwest, son. Are you familiar with a town called... in New Mexico? Yes, I... know it quite well. I need you to go down there. Tonight. One of our birds just went dark after a mid-air collision. Usually that wouldn't be an emergency, but there was an A-bomb aboard. And if they crashed into what we think they did, things could get complicated. First, you'll need to recover our cargo. Next, find what hit our boys and bring it into our custody. Understood, sir. To ensure there's no chance of this getting out, you'll be launching Project Tranquility once you arrive at the target location. Project Tranquility? The last I heard, that project was still under development. Wexler and McGill assured me everything is ready to be tested. Anyway, you'll get a full briefing when you arrive at the target location. With all due respect, sir, I don't feel comfortable field testing that equipment on our own people. John, the state of the nation demands gentle handling, and this would cause one hell of an uproar. Whether you want to believe it or not, Project Tranquility's our best option. Besides, testing this now could prevent armed conflict in the future. Understood. If I may, sir, the energy requirements of Project Tranquility are extremely high. How do you suggest we address that, sir? We're in luck, General. The construction of the Mammoth Butte Dam was completed just a few weeks ago. It is scheduled to become the primary source of electricity for the area next year. But it's already fully operational. Now, this mission is of the utmost secrecy. You'll be going dark. I won't be able to contact you once you're in the field, so plan accordingly. Yes, sir. Well, you have your orders, General. I look forward to your report when you return. God damn it! <sighs> Attention all personnel! Prepare to mobilize immediately! Move, move, move! This couch will be the death of me. Nevertheless, I would rather die than give my offspring the satisfaction of seeing me sleep in that coffin. Amos? What are you doing here? What has my offspring done now? It's not about Betty this time, Eliza. It's Lincoln. If you are here to tell me he has a good reason for not coming back last night... I am. No. There was a plane crash last night. That is fine. He is fine. Nod your head, Amos. Agree with me. Eliza. I must go to him. Is he in the hospital? Is he conscious? Answer me, goddammit. He's at the airfield, but we can't get in there right now. What the hell are you talking about? They're on lockdown until they figure out what the hell happened last night. We need to start making calls immediately. Get the sheriff on the phone. I'm the sheriff. The marshal, then. Or the marines. No, no. Call the coast guard. They always know what to do in these situations. Okay, listen to me for just a second, Eliza. Come with me now, and I'll drive you to Lincoln when we're done. Maybe the lockdown will be over by then. Or maybe Benjamin's militia could... Eliza! Focus! Fine, damn it. I will come with you. Great! I promise you won't regret it once you see what's going on.
This was a mistake. I should not have let you drag me here. What if Lincoln... Eliza, like I already told you, there's nothing you can do for him right now. But you need to see this. I think it's related to his accident. Or is it merely a coincidence? I don't believe in coincidences. And I know you don't either. <sighs> oh, all right. They arrived yesterday, right after the accident. And they built this whole base in less than 12 hours. Eliza, something seriously strange is going on. You bet there is something strange going on. I do not remember approving that building permit. And more importantly, I do not recall receiving any payment for that building permit. Who else knows about this? No one in town knows anything, and the governor won't take my calls. Can you blame him? The last few times you called him, you babbled about chipmunk gangs like a lunatic. Can we focus on the important thing here? What the hell should we do about this? Have you tried talking with the people here? Of course I did. But they always give me the same answer. Look. Stop right there. See? Well, we did everything we could. Now I suggest we... Eliza! <sighs> Fine, but let me handle this, okay? Oh, this is the highlight of my day.